Hey there guys, welcome back to another Anthony Vlogs video where Anthony vlogs. So today I'm once again joined by uh, my girlfriend Ray. Hello! Also known as Ray Sketches on Twitter, go feel free to give her a follow. Uh, you're the Ray Sketches on Instagram. Yes. Because you post there so much. <laughs> but either way, um, Ray, why, why are we here? Why are we doing another video? Uh, we went to a convention recently. A, yes, a Fan Expo Dallas, as it's, as it's called. They have several Fan Expo ones, like there's like ones in Canada and everything, but... This is Fan Expo Dallas at the K. Bailey Hutchinson uh, Convention Center in Dallas, Texas. Mm -hmm. So what do we, we went to a convention, what are we doing this video for? Uh, just uh, to like explain what you can expect from conventions, what we've experienced, and, and uh, how, what our perfect convention would be if we could create one. Experience and tips is what we're, we're basically covering Yeah. Today. You know, we're, we're talking about what we've done, how, what we've learned, all that stuff, but also kind of telling you, based off of that, here's what you should look for if you've never done a convention, or you're wanting to do conventions, or maybe you have and it wasn't what you expected, or maybe you have and you want to try something different. I don't know. But basically, based off of what we've done with conventions, we kind of want to talk about that and, and explain that a bit better. So, this was your second convention overall. Yes, it was. Now, overall, what was, what was good, bad? What do you think? Um... It was good. Uh, I, I mean, I pause as if it wasn't. It was definitely good. Uh, it, it was different from the last one. We did a lot more of meeting people this one. Um, overall, it was pretty good. It was just more so like scheduling conflicts on the convention Yes, end. Yes, well, which we'll get into. So this was yeah. a bigger convention than the one you previously went to. Yeah. Um, and so there was quite a bit of everything to do. And now when I think of conventions, this is for me personally, I feel like this is the main thing you get to do at conventions. Mm -hmm. There's other things here and there, but the three main things mm -hmm. are going to be shopping, celebrities, and cosplay. Yeah. Now obviously you don't have to do all those things. It's, it's up to you how you want to spend your weekend. Um, but for us, those are the three main things that we do, we look for, we, we try to work into the three-day weekend, essentially. Yes. So, I guess we can go ahead and start off, I want to go ahead and start off with merchandising first. So basically, um, your average convention will have a big old hall with bunches of booths and tables of people trying to sell you things. And, I mean, the, the main underlying thing of all this is budget. We did so much research. I mean, we were checking constantly on like yeah. celebrity prices and how long it's going to be and all that stuff to kind of figure out, okay, how much can we genuinely bring to this thing? Yeah. Now, um, the first convention you went to, I feel like you, you bought a couple items mainly because you didn't leave here yet. And so you would have had to bring them all home. Yeah. It was, I had to worry about, well, I brought plenty of money, but it's like, what can I fit on with me to the plane? Right. And then this one, uh, it was nice snowing. It's like, well, I'm just going home. <laughs> now, granted, saying that, how many items did you end up leaving with throughout two. the entire weekend? Uh, two. Two items. Yeah, two. Now, main reason for that for me personally is one, and this is a, this is a big thing. A lot of things are overpriced, and yeah. I understand it's a convention, so you bring out your stuff and you want to sell it. Uh, that being said, I think we live in a modern age where I can check on eBay and see what things are actually priced. Yeah. Uh, for example. There was a booth, and this kind of leads into a separate problem I have. There was a booth that was selling newer Transformers toys, like the current line that you can find in stores. It was the Voyager class, which is like, there's basically like three classes. This was like a medium-sized Transformers toy, which generally goes for between $25 to $30. Mm -hmm. This person had the newest ones that came out around December or so, or January, and they're currently still in stores, for $50 each. He was selling a $25 figure for $50. Now, I don't know if that was just because of the way he got them mm -hmm. or because he was like, well, you know, they, they are maybe a little bit hard to find. The thing is, they're not hard to find. No. We could go into any store and find them just fine. And so seeing that, it's like, well, I'm not going to buy that. And that was kind of another thing I had is that there was a lot of modern stuff at this convention. And but obviously, and I get it because you want to sell items. You want to bring things that you know will sell. Yeah. There was a lot of pops. There were booths that were just, sometimes just pops. So many. It, it's, it's weird, because, like, I get if there was, like, one, but there was, like, at least three that were just pops. Yeah, and it gets to a point where you're like, well, that's not special. I can go to the store and still get pops. And now there were some that were, like, older pops that you can't find anymore. I understand that bit of it. But overall, there was a bunch of new stuff, 
that was like, I can buy that anywhere. Mm -hmm. And then the older stuff that could be harder to find, but because it was harder to find, they were really overpriced. Yeah. Another example, we saw the, the, the Batman and Robin figures from 1997. Yes. We they did. were the, the classic, you know, small figures that they've had. Mm -hmm. uh, we, I have a few myself. Mm -hmm. But they were around like $20 a figure. And it's like, yes. I can go on eBay and get those for sometimes $5 each. Yeah. So you're telling me if I go online, I can get four of these figures or I can buy one here. Now, to be fair, a lot of these were carded, and they look nice, and maybe that plays a factor into it. That being said, a lot of these figures, like the figures from the 90s even, mm -hmm. are, they were way too expensive. And I didn't even see that many like good vintage stuff. I didn't see any like vintage He-Man or Transformers. Well, I did see Transformers, but yeah. nothing like Turtles related. Nothing to the point where I was like, I could imagine spending $20 on a, on a loose figure because it is vintage. Yeah. Those weren't loose. And so I think that was the biggest problem with the recent convention was everything was way overpriced. Yeah, it was. There was definitely plenty of things of like, oh, I like that. I don't want to pay that price for it. I can yeah. find it online later, cheaper. And yeah, cause yeah. And the main message with that is just just be careful. Um, you know, I, I feel like you know, a huge part of this, like we said, it's a third of why we go to these things, mm -hmm. is the ability to go and look at booths and find old comics and toys and even art and like costume pieces and clothing yeah. and all cool stuff. But just don't get wrapped up in the moment. Try to remember that, okay, can I find this anywhere else? Can I find it cheaper? And this is a, this is an exhibit hall. You can bargain with them. Now, I'm not going to say they're all going to be like, okay, I'll do it. Yeah. But you, you can definitely work on it. My biggest thing is always try to wait till Sunday. Um, because if there's an item and it's expensive and it's, you know, if you come back and it's still there, just, just wait. Because mm -hmm. eventually they're going to want to get rid of their stuff because they don't want to bring it home on the last day. They want to get rid of whatever they can. And so they're going to mark stuff down. Um, so I would say that's a good bet. Um, another thing that we tend to do is if we see something, and this kind of goes into what I was saying just now, wait a little bit. Yeah. Come back, and if it's still there, then take that as a message of, okay, I should buy it. Because mm -hmm. there's some items that are like, I don't know if I really want that. Like, mm -hmm. I kind of do, but I kind of don't. I don't know. I got a whole weekend ahead of me. I don't want to waste all my money now. Just leave it there. Yeah. Come back maybe at the end of the day or tomorrow, and if it's still there, be like, okay, no one's bought it yet, I'll get it. Yep. That's just my personal take on it, honestly. Uh, just because, like I said, this recently, um, I didn't buy anything off of the exhibit hall. I bought a con exclusive item that was like from their official like convention booth, um, and it was like a lunchbox that was uh, Thanos themed. Yeah. So that was cool. I like that. So merchandising, once again, it just sort of depends on what you're looking for. Um, a lot of anime stuff. There's a lot of anime stuff. I don't know why exactly. Yeah. There was there was quite a bit of anime, but just just kind of keep in mind that hey, if it's if it's that hard to find, maybe jump on it. But just keep in mind we live in an age where you can do eBay, Amazon. There are stores all over the place. We don't live in the dark ages. There are other places to get this stuff. And I'm not trying to screw over the exhibitors. I understand they have to make money. They have to, you know, these things are not cheap to get into these places yeah. to get a small booth. You know, it's, I understand, they have to make their money back. Yeah. But, on the other end, we want to make sure that we're not getting ripped off. So, it's just a matter of playing that game. So, yeah. Yeah. That's all that really is. Um, yeah, so that's all I really have to say on the merchandising end of it. I don't know if you have anything to add. Um, no, you pretty much covered it. I mean, the item that, like, I, as soon as I saw it, I was like, I have to get this, was something... I, I saw it was like about $25 online, but when you add in the shipping, it would have been 30 which is what we paid for in anyways. Yeah, and most of those places, depending on the place, um, won't add tax. It's just a flat, give them 30 bucks and they're good. Yeah. And, and in mind, the, the figure that you have in question mm -hmm. is actually the figure that we have here. Yeah. It's the uh, Kingdom Come uh, Night Star. Is yeah. That? Um, so you're a fan of this character. I uh, do. It's very rare that you find merchandise of this character because she's from one story. Honestly, I think this is the only, like, DC produced thing. Yeah. You find a bunch of uh, customs, but this is the only thing DC is actually yeah. because she's only put, like, put in the, the one story, so she's not, like, exactly a, a character you can make dozens of. Yeah. And how often have you seen that figure before going to the convention? Like, in store in person? Never. So that's why you picked it up. Yes. It's an, it's an item you don't see often, mm -hmm. and it's an item that you know that you would want no matter what. Yes. So that would be an item that I feel like you can jump on, and, and it makes sense. Yes. You're good. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's that's like that's all I have to say about the, 
the merchandising stuff. Just budget it. Be careful. Uh, just just kind of think about what you're doing because it's very, very easy to get wrapped up in the moment. I mean, my second con that happened to me and I bought something, I was like, why did I buy this? Like, yeah. <laughs> what happened? I got swindled. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is, like, uh, I noticed, like, Think Geek had a booth. Um, yeah, and th that'll happen now at the bigger did. conventions. And the only thing I want to say is if if it's like an actual store has a booth there, uh, it doesn't get sold at the con, it will be in store. Brought back to the store, yeah. Yeah, so, like, not Good to chance, like, at least, yeah. Not to be like, hey guys, don't go to these. Be like, think don't. about it. Yeah. Consider it. Don't worry. Yeah, especially if there's other, like, mom and pop style stores or even artists, you know, that kind of stuff. And yeah. All. Try to help more of the smaller people. Yeah. Um, so the, the, the exhibit hall wasn't that great. It was kind of the, the, the bottom of, I'd say, this convention, unfortunately. Even though it was much yeah. bigger, it was just not as much. Which is fine, because that was primarily most of my first convention was just yeah. the exhibit hall, mm -hmm. so it's, it's fine. Now, the next step on that is there, obviously with conventions, there's going to be a lot of celebrities. Yes. And with celebrities, um, there's, there's pretty much three things you can do with celebrities. Mm -hmm. Autograph, photo op, panels. Yes. So you can wait in line to get their signature and, and pay money for it. Uh, you can wait in line, take a photo and pay money for it. And it's a professionally done photo with a backdrop and a camera yeah. and all that stuff. Or you can go to a panel, maybe ask them a question and just listen to them actually have a conversation. Yes. Now of those three things, we did two of them. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't do one of them. Uh, what do you think is on the top of your list to do? And what do you think you maybe maybe could do without because um, we met we met four celebrities in total yes. technically we met five <laughs> we did four uh, we met on the first day Val Kilmer yes and voice actor Josh Keaton yes um, we met uh, well you met Jeff Goldblum I did and we met Charlie Cox yes so uh, of those like of the, like I said the three things mm -hmm. what exactly do you think of those are like the the most fun that you'd want to do again or maybe do this differently or what um. I guess it, it kind of depends on the celebrity because like looking back on it now uh, like if it's like a really high paid celebrity like Jeff Goldblum if you get something signed by him you're you're paying just for a signature you're not getting a conversation correct where... and that's because he's one a very talented actor you know he's mm -hmm. a bit of a, an actual name he's a Hollywood yes. star not just like a and another, nothing against these people but yeah obviously if you saw that there was someone from CW's The 100, yeah, and then you saw Jeff Goldblum, mm -hmm. it's kind of obvious as who's to be the bigger star. Yeah. Once again, all those people there, super talented, there's a reason they were there, and there were yeah. people seeing them left and right. Yes. But if I see Tobuscus, and I see <laughs> Jason Momoa, um, Jason Momoa's gonna have the bigger line. It, of course. Yeah. yeah. So it's just like, just know what you're paying for when you're in line for an autograph. No, you're paying just for a signature. You're not paying for, like, a little mini conversation. Which, which can you, happen. Yes, you can get, but it's like... Don't expect it. If you're in a line with 400 people, you're you're just getting a signature. Yeah. Um, Be aware. Be aware of what you're doing. Um, yes. And, and don't try to, like, make too much of it. Because mm -hmm. these... I understand you, people come to conventions and they want to meet these people. And that's really cool. That's why I go, to be the celebrities. Yes. Um, but on the other hand, you got to remember that there are hundreds of other people doing the exact same thing you're doing at that same day. Yeah. So try to keep it light, try to keep it, you know, fresh. Um, so that, that's definitely the thing. So you're saying, so ask the question again, of those three things, signature, photo op, panel, what did you have the most fun with? What would you rather do again? Um, I had a lot of fun with the panel. Um, so we went to one panel, which did. was Rob Paulson and Maurice Lamarge, both voice actors they've yeah. done. Uh, Pinky and the Brain, Animaniacs, Futurama, yeah. uh, Ninja Turtles. They, those guys have done a lot of stuff, um, obviously. Yeah. I'm sure you've heard their voices. Like, it's one of those things. <laughs> if you don't realize it, you probably have. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that was a lot of fun. It's not like I would take away of, like, my items that I got signed back. It's, I don't know, It's it depends on your peripheral personal preference uh mm. i'm i'm very happy with what i got i'm i'm happy i got uh a photo signed by val kilmer and i'm happy i got my jurassic uh park book signed by jeff goldblum mm -hmm. especially since he gave me a look <laughs> so um uh, i mean again it's just 
you really got to think about what you want. If you, if you want like a conversation with the person you're meeting and you want to guarantee like to at least say something to them, maybe go towards a panel with a Q and A or maybe even a photo op just to say, Hey, really quick. Um, depends on the celebrity. Like you mentioned yeah, before. It does depend on the celebrity. If you're going for someone on a TV show, I'm sure you have a bit more leeway. Mm-hmm. Definitely voice actors you you can talk to. Yeah, and we like we mentioned the four people that we chose. Um, mm-hmm. We kind of had to split up who we were going to meet and you know who was going to make the cut kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and you just happened to choose two <laughs> actors I did. who had to meet many, many people that day and didn't exactly have time to chat. Yeah. Um, with, like I said, Val Kilmer and Jeff Goldblum. Yes. Now, because I've done this a few times, I would recommend, and obviously, if you don't care for animation and stuff like that, that's fine. I understand. But as far as myself, I'm a big cartoon guy. Um, so knowing voice actors, I've enjoyed their work for so much for so long, and I've I've watched a lot of stuff with them online. They're really funny people, and so meeting people like Josh Keaton mm-hmm. and Rob Paulson and all these people, like previously, I've met people like Tom Kenny, Tara Strong. They're always great because they're always super thankful that people come out. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, real quick story about Rob Paulson. We were waiting in line for Josh Keaton, who, for those of you who don't know, Josh Keaton voiced Spider-Man in Spectacular Spider-Man. He voiced Hal Jordan in the Green Lantern animated series. He voiced young Hercules. Uh, he's been in Transformers Prime, uh, currently in Voltron. Like, mm-hmm. that that's who that is. And so we're waiting in line for him, and I look over, and... I know what these voice actors look like, but over in Rob Paulson's line, because Rob hadn't shown up yet, mm-hmm. over here walks Rob, and he talks to the, the person in front of his line, and is like, excuse me, is this the line for Rob Paulson? And he goes down and starts shaking everyone's hand, yeah. and I mean, to the point where there's like little girls like crying and everything, like, this he is a big girl moment. A hug. Yeah, like he mm-hmm. went through his entire line and shook their hands and got to know, it was really, really cool. Yeah. On top of that, we were walking the next day, mm-hmm. and it's this big sea of people. And this is one of the, the negative things about a convention that you have to be prepared for. Because of the way it was set up, they had all the really need to see celebrities next to each other. Yeah. And so you have like lines of people, lines of people, a walkway, and so it's just a sea. It's a sea of people waiting and like just walking and doing all sorts of stuff. And through the sea of people, I see Rob Paulson in front of me. And so I'm like, I'm going to say hi to Rob. <laughs> so I walk up to him. I'm like, Rob. And he turns around and I'm like, hey, hey man, you know, I, I love what you do. You're awesome. Thanks. And he shook my hand and I was like, hey, you know, great. Thanks. <laughs> and, you know, it's one of those things where obviously it depends on the person. Yeah. Um, but the day before I saw that Rob was clearly greeting his fans and having a good time. And so I'd say if you get that chance and they're clearly in a good mood, obviously, if they're being ushered by the, the people that work the convention and they look like the Secret Service, and they've got like a coffee in their hand, and they're like, I gotta go to my autograph table. <laughs> Maybe don't go like, oh my god, hey, so nice <laughs> to meet you, because they may not be into it. Yeah. But I saw Rob by himself. I already know that he's a super chill dude about it. Yeah. So I went up there, and I was like, I'm gonna take this chance. I'm gonna have a one-on-one with Rob Paulson, and I did. And I didn't waste too much of his time, because he's gotta be somewhere, and so do I. So I was like, hey, I enjoy your work. Thank you. Mm-hmm. That's it. Um. So I, I, I would say just, just kind of really measure out the environment sort of just look at everything kind of understand what environment you're in and and go from there yeah it also helps uh like paying attention to times when because some people only autograph for an hour have a break go to a a, um have a panel and And then then they're follow up and then signature yeah yeah it's like so it helps like, knowing when. Try to map out as much as possible. Yeah. Obviously, you don't have to be like, and then we'll do this, and then we'll do this, and then we'll do this, because that kind of ruins the fun. Yeah. But as, as much as you can, because we kind of knew that I had to meet Charlie Cox, and you had to meet Jeff Goldblum. Yes. And so, uh, Jeff Goldblum had a panel and a photo op in the morning. Yes. And then he had a signature, and then at an hour after that, he had another photo op. Mm-hmm. And so you had a small, and he was only there one day. So yeah. you're like, I ha- I know I have to get in line at a certain time if I know I'm going to have to meet him. Yeah. Charlie Cox, he was scheduled to start signing after his photo op and panel about 45 minutes or so after Goldblum was set to show up. Yep. So I knew, because of the way these lines work, and that's another thing, 
be if you're wanting to meet celebrities, be prepared to wait. You oh, know, yeah. I know it's annoying to kind of stay in there and wait for sometimes hours on end. Mm -hmm. um, if that's not for you, then that's fine. Don't do it. But if you're wanting to be prepared to wait and chill and be like, okay, this is what I'm going to be doing for the next hour. Bring, wear the right shoes. Wear the right <laughs> shoes. Bring a comic book or a book or a, a portable DVD player. I don't know. <laughs> something Download something on your phone. <laughs> do something because, yeah, you might be standing there for a while. And, you know, you may get lucky and stand next to someone who can have a good conversation with. Yep. You may not. Be prepared for that, too. Uh, that's just one of those things. You know, there's a lot of people yeah. at these conventions, and it's a lot of different types of people and everything, which is great. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's, it depends on what you're into, I'd say. That's, that's kind of the main thing. Um, so just be, be prepared to wait. Be prepared to schedule out your day. Mm -hmm. And I'd say be prepared. If you can't do everything, then don't expect to do everything. Yeah, we we set very minimum goals for ourselves each day. And that's what you, really you should do. Just kind of acknowledge the fact that, okay, I probably won't be able to do everything I want. Let me just try to do like one or two, three things a day, and then I can move around that. Yeah. Because that'll be the best part. Um, yeah, so that, that's kind of the main thing. And that kind of mm -hmm. leads us into the third day and the yeah. third big thing that you can do, which is cosplay. Yes. So... I would say with cosplay, um, it's a lot of fun. I mean, cosplay is its own thing. That's its own video. That's its own discussion. Yeah. But I would say just make sure you're aware of what you're wearing mm -hmm. and maybe try to get it all done. Get Wear it all the night before Yeah. to make sure everything's there. Don't try to be like, oh, well, the next morning I'll put it all on and hopefully it'll work. Try a little bit of just like, okay, does this all work right? I don't know. Mm -hmm. See, make sure you can move. Make sure you can... Not exactly be comfortable, because sometimes these costumes are not comfortable at all. Yeah. But make sure that you can see yourself wearing this costume possibly all day. Yeah. Because, like, for example, Sunday, mm -hmm. we were there for how many hours? Like, four hours? Because right afterwards you had to go to watch WrestleMania. Yeah. Uh, yeah, four hours. <laughs> yeah. And so if you're there for four hours, make sure in your head you're like, okay, can I wear this for up to four hours, maybe more? Mm -hmm. Like, am I okay doing that? Yeah. Um, bring... Things just in case. Now, this place did have, like, an area mm -hmm. called the Cosplay Hideaway yeah. where there was things where, like, like water to drink and you – there was, like, items where you can, like, fix your costume if you need to. Mm -hmm. uh, just be prepared. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Just I'm, in case. Like, especially if you have uh, makeup on, any type, really, bring a little bit of it with you so you can touch yourself up if you need to. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean – also, it doesn't help when you – or it does help when the night before when you're uh, making sure everything looks good, try out a couple of poses yourself so you know, it's like, all right, someone asked me for a photo, I'm going to pose like this this time. Or someone asked me for a photo, next time I'm going to do this. Or Know how you, to move. Yeah, to where you look right because you know what you look like normally without, you know, like possibly a wig or a hat or something. Right. But you're... You're, you almost become the character, so it's like, what angle works best for this person? That way, you know, it helps that you look good, and then the person also has a really nice photo with a great cosplayer. Yeah, mm -hmm. which leads into another thing, and that's something we still haven't learned yet. <laughs> yes. um, if possible, bring a photographer of some sort. Have mm -hmm. somebody, like, if you're going, just, you know, if you're both going in costume, see if you can bring a friend that mm -hmm. has a phone with a good camera yes. so they can take photos when you're taking photos. Because this has happened so many times now, mm -hmm. and it's it's our mistake. Um, <laughs> just because it's one of those things where we, we cosplayed very last minute this time. Yes. Um, we we kind of did, like, a last minute decision on what we were going to do. Mm -hmm. But because of that, we don't have a lot of photos of us mm -hmm. as our characters. So if you're yeah. wanting to get photos... Don't expect people to post them online the next day. That's not going to be the case. Um, we, I, I think it took a week before we found like photos of ourselves. Yeah. Um, before that even happens. So that's one of those things. So I'd say if you're wanting to get photos of yourself, mm -hmm. um, see if you can bring a friend with a, a nice phone so that they can take photos of you and do all that kind of stuff. Just be prepared for it. Because yeah. if you don't, like I said, you, there's no guarantee that you're going to find yourself on Instagram or Facebook or whatever afterwards mm -hmm. because it may take them a while to post it or you might be checking the wrong tag. Like, it all just it yeah. depends. Uh, like, the other thing is if you can't get that friend because obviously they would need their own ticket, mm -hmm. uh, don't be afraid to ask someone else yeah. to take a picture because usually everyone is 
really friendly when it comes to stuff like that. It's yeah. like, hey, will you take a picture of us, please? And they're like, yeah, sure, no problem. And it may even like, you know what, Let, I want to take a picture with you guys anyways. So it just like, it's usually the people who are attending are a lot more friendlier than what you would think. Yeah, it's a pretty good, I mean, I, pretty, pretty good experience there. I mean, we yeah. did, just to kind of give an example, on Sunday when we dressed up, we just happened to stumble across all these other DC cosplayers because yeah. I was cosplaying as Nightwing, you were Zatanna. Yes. And we just happened to stumble across all these other DC cosplayers, and they were talking about like, "Hey, we're gonna do this big photo op, and then we're gonna go take a photo with the Tumblr." Mm -hmm. um, so do you guys want to do that? And it's like, "Yeah, of course." Yeah. And so we basically got roped into this big photo shoot, which was really cool. That was a lot yeah, of fun. Yeah, it was. It was great. So I'd say just just be open, um, be very easy to kind of move and twist with the environment and the schedule and everything like that mm -hmm. and and just uh just have fun with it you know you want to schedule out your day so you're not like completely lost yeah but be ready to change at any second as well oh yeah because plans can change things can can do whatever so mm -hmm. and it also just sort of depends i'd say just keep an open mind with going to a convention keep an open mind and realize that things are going to cost money you know autographs will cost money Toys and comics and all sorts of stuff, they're going to cost money. Yes. You're going to have to wait in line. You're going to have to wait through people. But at the end of the day, it's it's a hell of a time. It's super fun. It's very fun. Um, yeah. I mean, it was, it, was, it was a great weekend. Yeah. I had a really good time. Yeah. So, I mean, do you have any other notes to add about as far as tips for people or the experience overall? Mm -hmm. I think of something as soon as the camera goes off, but right now, no. Right. That's usually how it goes. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it, guys. Like I said, just just try to just have fun with it and be aware of what you're doing, because uh, it can it can be one of those things. If you're not prepared and you're not sure what to do, uh, it it can be a bad time. Um, yeah. But just uh, try try to map it out and just just have fun with it. That's really the best thing you can do. Mm -hmm. Just have fun, budget time and and have fun. Yes. Uh, but that's pretty much it, guys. Um, if you guys have cool con experiences, if you've got stories about meeting a celebrity or uh, a cosplay thing that you did or whatever, let us know in the comments below. Um, if you were at Fan Expo Dallas, uh, let us know as well. Um, you know, it, it was a really fun time. Tell us about what you did with the, the celebrities or whatever. Did you get a picture with a, a sad-looking Ben Affleck? Who knows? <laughs> uh, but that's pretty much it, guys. And uh, we'll see you later. Bye.